Ever wonder where giant architectural models like this one come from? How do they get all the little trees looking right? How are all the buildings the right size and shape and color? Today, we're going to find out. I'm here at RJ Models in Shenzhen, China. Cham, thank you so much for yes, having buddy. me. Everybody, welcome. Thank you. This place is incredible. It's so much bigger than I thought it was going to be when you first emailed me. How many employees do you guys have here? We have about 500 employees. Oh my god. This is no little model shop with no, two people not. sitting in the back room. This is a serious factory operation. It is, it is. I'm so excited to see what goes into making all these. I notice we've got giant stacks of trees here that we are being put them. on a model. Yeah. You make those in-house? Yes, we do. First, I think we should go back to the beginning of like, yes. how do you guys start to build up the model? Sure. Is that upstairs? It's upstairs. All right, yeah. let's go take Let's a look. go. So we're now in your upstairs workshop, yes. and there's tons of model makers in every direction around us. <laughs> it seems like every place there's a flat surface, there's someone working on something very minuscule. You are right. right. This, is, this is very in progress. In fact, this is a very early stage of the model. So we start, we get a drawing from the designers, yep, sure. and then we clean up the drawings yep. uh, down to the lines that we want to use for either yeah. CNC machine or lasering. Yep. And we work out where the LED lights are going to be. Yeah. And um, we wire them up. Um, we cut the hollow core. We spray them up and then we stack them up together. Yeah. And okay. run the columns through. The next step is to apply elevations. Okay. Yeah. So, and so elevations for, for someone who's not familiar with architectural models or architectural terms is the side views? Yeah, the side views. You have your, your windows. You yep. have your window frames, right. you have your balconies. So that's all of your like facades that, that go on. Exactly. Yeah. This is now what we're talking about in terms of facade. Yes, this is a facade. So we have elevations going on. They are made of different colors yep. of uh, perspex. Yeah. Tinted gray, tinted blue. And for the blue one, we apply a film. Okay. Like what you would use on the windows on the oh. actual building. Oh, like on the back side. Yeah, on the back side. Uh, to get the color. To get the color, right? And then we apply uh, fins. Uh, all these different features. Right, the white the and white, whatnot. The white fins. And so those are glued on? Those are glued on one by one. Oh and goodness. this is where the CNC machine will come in handy because right. it, will, it will engrave a channel for the fins to slot in. Oh. This is um, a block of chemi wood, a chemical wood. Yeah. We machine out so he can heat and bend the plastic oh. to the right radius. So this started out flat? Yes. So what's amazing to me is that you guys are mixing all of these new, you know, CNC, 3D printing, all this, all this tools that are computer controlled yes. with a whole bunch of hand finishing. You can't just 3D print this from start to finish. No, no, not, not everything. <laughs> layer by layer. Changed, no. right? So for example, because of the dimensions of this model, yep. uh, you won't have ceiling lighting. Right. But what you would have, you have a core illumination right. where the whole core will light up. Awesome. Well, let's go see some of your, uh, some of your machine shops sure. here. Sure. Yeah. So we have a few laser machines and... Um... <laughs> Cham, this is not what we in the West would call a few laser machines. This they is what we would call like a herd of laser machines. They, they, oh, they, oh they, do, they do the job. Uh, they, need, they run 24 hours around yeah. the clock. Lasering process is quite quick. Yeah. and they can get things done very sharply. We mostly cut acrylic because um, it works best with laser machine. Yeah. When we work with ABS um, we, we, or styrene, yeah. we use the routers. Right, yeah. okay. So he's cutting what looks like a, one of these floor plates? He's one, yes, definitely one of the floor plates and, and you can tell they're on different layers. So he would do engraving, right. cut through and uh, rastering. Right. And it looks like he's cutting holes for or this is cutting holes for the LEDs right now? Uh, LEDs and also it is cutting holes for columns to go through. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So we normally cut the, the, the holes on the inside first, and then we do the external cut. Right. So, so it, it doesn't move it on doesn't you. It doesn't move. Maybe go look at your, uh, at your milling room next yeah, door next. Yeah. Woo, it smells in here too. <laughs> it does. So um, these are all ABS sheets. They are very okay. fine. This is basically engraving uh, an ele elevation. So this will then be sprayed in the spray booth yes, afterwards? Yes, okay. and then it gets applied to yeah. uh, the building. This material is what we call a chemi wood. Okay. Chemical wood is yep. basically compact uh, dust. 
Okay. Yeah. But it is actually wood fibers. It's it, not it, a, it is. It's not just yeah, plastic. Yeah. And um, it's it's very easy to machine, yeah. and it's very stable. And so it looks it, like it, you can get really fine detail out of you it. Do, ways you do. You do it. Get and it's easy to it's easy to fan. Right. And it stays in shape. It doesn't go out of shape. And so this you, looks like a like an elevation map. I yeah. Guess. It's, you know, it's, it's a, a, it's a contour. Yeah. It's okay. A con it's contour, contour would be the right. Yeah. Architectural term. So you got your guys here doing last minute CAD for the machines? Yes, CAD they are cam. actually they are actually laying out all the parts to fit on the table of the machine. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. So they've got the drawings already from your from your CAD guys. CAD yeah. guys. Yeah. And then now they're just figuring out okay, what machines are they gonna go on yes. and how and how they fit different on the thicknesses bed. and different machines and it. to make the best use of per sheet of material. Sure. It's basically laying out. Yeah, awesome. Now let's go across the hall to the spray booth. Yeah. So what happens is we are we have switched to water-based paints yeah. for environmental uh, purposes. Yeah. Which the, the local government is really cracking. Paint is yes. one of the things yes. they're really focused yes. on right and now. It's basically water that right. traps the dust of the paint right. and it gets into a pool. So just a sheet of water that's yeah. dribbling yeah. down. And as the spray hits it, it washes down into the into the water. Yeah, it's, it's the water wall. <laughs> and it's just so that you don't that these guys aren't breathing the paint all day exactly. and it's not getting everywhere. Exactly. And yeah. also the paint does not come back to the painted material. Oh right, okay, yeah. sure. So they are spraying a clear coat and um, they are probably applying like a matte finish. Okay. So it looks frosted rather yeah. than just clear. Because of the the backing is still on, yeah. he can't really tell how dense the frost is. Right. So he needs to be really careful and yep. check it under different angle just right. to make sure that he that the spray is consistent. Getting enough coverage. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. This definitely seems like like one of the many art forms that you have yes. here of like this is not just a don't think about what you're doing. Yeah. Is there airflow towards this as well? Like how does the paint all go that direction? There, there, the... there is airflow coming coming from that. Coming in. Yeah. Coming I in. see, and that's yeah. what this big yes. this big duct work is up here. And then it get get extracted as well. Right. Okay. Okay. And, so and the, is, all the air in the room is moving this way. Yes. So this is a temperature control uh, dry room, about fifty degrees Celsius. Okay, that's pretty hot. Yeah. Yeah. It's like what one twenty? Yeah. Somewhere in there. Fahrenheit. Oh yeah, it's toasty. Yeah. And loud. We got a few things trying in here yeah. right now. Yeah. Sweet. We, what should we look at next? We can go to the 3D print, 3D print machine. Okay. Yeah. We can do that. I kind of want to show people what's in here. You're curious. Because I, you? I'm curious. <laughs> You've shown this to me once before, yes. and I think this is one of the more special things. Yes. This is this is old school. Um, we do a lot of uh, sculpting and casting in this room before the. 3D printers came along. Right. Yes. So this is what model making looked like, what, five years ago, 10 years ago? Yeah, just as, as short as five years ago. Yeah. Things changed very, very quickly. And so this is all your old inventory of, of molds yes. and, uh, I guess, blanks? Or what, what would you call these? Yeah, they're just, they're just parts. And yeah. we still use them from time to time yeah. if we need to do uh, multiple pieces of them. Right. Casting is still very uh, cost effective. Right. So these are what you make the molds from, yeah. right? And these were each hand sculpted, or they hand sculpt one and you, then. You hand sculpt one and then you mold them in multiple pieces. And then you, and then you cast. You make a set yeah. and then you make a mold out of that. Yes. I got it. So we've got like vases and bottles and yeah. little tiny ships. And then in here you have And your in here we can have a the look inner at the, sanctum. the the master sculptor. Mm. He's working oh. on a gym equipment. My Jim. He's working on little gym dudes that are at the gym working out. And so how long has he been with you? Thirteen years. Thirteen years. So this year he, he will get an award for like a long service yeah. um, award. Yeah. And sometimes uh, all he gets is a piece of um, a, a photo yeah. and he has to create a 3D object. I notice he's got, yeah, got some reference materials yes. in the background here. Yes. None of which are people working out, I should add. <laughs> <laughs> he is entirely freehanding this one, it looks like. And then back here are all the, back the, here, the treasures. Yes. All the people. And then you've got mold making over here? Yes. Uh, the old school way. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you get resin poured into the casting. Yeah. And then you stick it into this chamber. Yeah. And it vacuums and uh, free of bubble. Right, so this is for removing the bubbles yeah. in the mold once you've poured it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So uh, these are projects in different cities from the same developers, and they are what we call the abstract models. Yeah, so and these look really different from you, what we were looking yes. at earlier. So you have, uh, it's quite monochromatic. Yeah. So basically right. you have just white and frosted yeah. and clear, and the base is made out of timber. Yeah. Uh, veneer and beach timber. Um, so you, you get a contrast between the buildings right. and, and the base. Yeah. It's lovely and totally different yeah. from what I think of when I think of architectural models. Yeah. You guys have made wood-colored trees. <laughs> yes, in-house, and we spray them different colors. So oh my God. kind of different, different variety, different species. And yeah. uh, stippled mirror perspex yeah. for river, for water. Yeah. And so why would a designer choose this over like a more traditional you know, full color. Well, I guess this is for, it's for different audience. Yeah. So this is not like a project that you sell to uh, people who, who buy houses. These right. are developments to show um, different uh, government bodies or yeah. they put them in, in their lobby to show yeah. off, you know, this is one of our projects. So this is a real well-known, one of the higher-end shopping malls It is, it is in Shenzhen, yeah. yeah. Sometimes designers like to, to show people yeah. what they have designed. Yeah. And also sometimes developers want to put them into their, their showroom or if they okay. have an exhibition to yeah. promote okay. their projects. Yeah. So it looks like you're missing a few trees here and yes. there's still little, in, in progress. little touches to yes. be put on things. But you were saying this ships out today, tomorrow? It ships out tomorrow. Oh my god. The buildings get taken away. Oh. They are removable. Okay. So we will pack them separately. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you can notice that there is a join line. Right. Here. Oh, I see. This is actually a cut. Yeah. Make our own packing crates yeah. in-house. Yeah. If uh, we do single-use packing crates, right. we also build uh, multiple-use right. flight cases. Yeah. One, you guys have spent a ton of time on these. Yes. <laughs> right? So you'd really hate for it to arrive at the other side broken. Yeah. But also, the customers pay quite a bit of money for something like this. Yes, they're premium um, uh, products. We are talking about ten to one hundred thousand. Okay. It depends on on uh, U.S. dollars. On yeah, U.S. dollars. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have been terrified even just walking around your models because I I realized that just putting an elbow down yeah. could take out a whole row of trees. You were telling me the other day that there's a different taste between different buyers in terms of what a model looks like. Yes, in the West in general, yeah. they like a uh, less bright model. So yeah. it's more subdued color, exactly. it's more muted. Yes, more muted. Yeah. But in Southeast Asia, if they're selling a project, they want it to look a bit uh, more realistic. And more saturated colors. Yes. Awesome. Well, let's go. Let's okay. go. Keep looking. Just want to interject with a couple quick updates here from the future. First, uh, a lot of people have been worried about me because of the whole coronavirus situation. I'm good. I've been here in the U.S. Uh, since Christmas, and uh, we actually recorded this video in December. Second, I'd like to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. Flights and cameras and equipment and crew it all adds up, and so I'd like to thank them for making it possible for me to keep taking you on adventures. Now, you've already heard about Audible, I know, but it's been my go-to place for audiobooks for years now. So I'm going to take this time to tell you about one of my favorite books, which is Surely You Must Be Joking, Mr. Feynman. It's the autobiography of famous physicist Richard Feynman. He was this insatiably curious guy who was always up to all sorts of pranks and shenanigans, ranging from cracking safes for fun while he was uh, at Los Alamos working on the nuclear bomb to constant unconventional and unauthorized experiments to all sorts of pranks that were just constantly running in between being this famous and brilliant theoretical physicist. It's deeply funny and it's just this book that I, I keep coming back to time and time again. It's, it's just this amazing storytelling. You can listen to it for free when you sign up by visiting audible.com slash strange parts or text strange parts to 500 500. That's audible.com slash strange parts or text strange parts to 500 500. And now we're going into the 3D print okay. machine room. Awesome. So we These have the fancy uh, ones. we have three of them. Oh, here we go. Here's one printing. We we do we use these machines when we have um, stuff that we need a quick turnaround. I mean, these are very expensive machines, right? They these are they are one of the best. Fifty thousand yeah. dollar, hundred thousand yes. dollar type yes. machines. I mean, there are great SLA printing companies here in Shenzhen. Yes. Why why use your own? Why why own your own? 
Well, sometimes we need to do things very quickly, and right. we cannot ask people to stop their machines. Right. Yeah. So it's uh, also easy to control um, timing and quality right. in house. This is uh, SLA, right? This is SLA. Yeah, so no it's SLA. Uh, res UV cure resin. UV cure resins, and yeah. we have also we do different types, and uh, we have the normal type. We also have the heat, you know, high temperature type. Okay. So, and they, so you run different types in different machines. Yes, we have to. We can't mix them. Yeah. Got it. So what does this look like when it comes out? We have some, some, some bits here. Goopy ones here. Yep, yep. That is waiting to get into uh, a bath. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I, I see we've got a van there <laughs> <laughs> ready to go. A quite large scale van. Yep. And then all of this is support material here, yes, right? Yes, they, they get, get broken off. off they get right? trimmed off. Yep. yep. And we can head out to look at some CNC machines. Yeah. So these are much bigger than your other ones. Yes, these, these are, are more, not the little routers. No, they're more heavy duty. Yeah, uh, this CNC. is what I would think of when I think of a, yes. a CNC mill. And so why use these over those? Just they can do deeper cuts, okay. faster, yeah. and, and, fresher, and, and they have a bigger bed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so again, it looks like you're doing some sort of contour. Yes, like a base, like a, yeah. I know a lot of people would be horrified to see that you're cutting chem wood in here. Usually, <laughs> usually these things are like only pla only metal. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of plastic. Yeah. We cut wood as well. Yeah. This came out from the machine. Yeah. So this this is a chemi wood. And this will be sanded. Yeah. Okay. Spray. Okay. Yeah. I love how many processes you you guys are all using together. It's you know particularly in Shenzhen when we when I come to factories uh, you know I'll see. You know, they're just a CNC shop, or yes. they're just a laser shop, or they're just an injection molding shop, or whatever. And you guys have it all in house. Yeah, <laughs> and you're interchangeably using all the different pieces. We have to be, we have, you have to be very creative. Yeah. I want to see how you're doing landscaping. Okay. Because that's the thing that when people think of modeling, you know, they think of like model railroad trees. Yes. Right? Maybe you can make some you. trees. I would like to try making a tree. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. All right. Oh, Hello. My goodness. 他想他想學怎麼做樹. So they've got little plastic trunks, trunks and branches. Okay. And they dip it into uh, glue, white glue. Yep. And then into into the flocking. Oh my goodness. So this is all your tree inventory here, your yes. excess inventory. Oh yeah. So That's gorgeous. So wire trunk, wire trunk, wire branches. Yep. Yeah. And then flocking just yep. like that over yep. there. Was it, this sprayed it is already or no? Colored. Already like colored. The fluff is already, already okay. colored. Yeah. And then you sprayed the trunk yes. before you put the flocking yep. on. That is pretty cool. When I came by the other day, they were making larger trees. Yes. I would love to show people a bit about that process. Sure. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Let's let get you started. Okay. <laughs> well, have me try it. So what you do, you you. You try to make a, a bunch of uh, wires. Okay, Put like a, a big bundle. Wires, yeah. And so the, the number of turns is the size of the trunk? Exactly. Okay, so now we, we snip the whole bundle. So now we just have a straight bundle. Yep, and then she's doubling up. Yeah. And then uh, twist, twist it together. Oh, okay, yeah. So this will be the bottom of the trunk, and then all the branches up here. It's literally just a twist of wire. All right, so you show me. So about half, half, half. Oh, three. Like this. And then twist. Like that. Twist. Oh yeah, okay. So just keep splitting, keep splitting, keep splitting. Oh my goodness, okay, I'll try this one. Let me try that one. Okay. Oh, she's so fast. Try to catch up, Scotty. I know, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> she says go with the flow. Go with the flow. Yeah, go right. with the flow. Okay. Like that? Yeah. That's amazing. So just continuing to twist them out. She split them one more time. The bundles are like three and four now. So you open them up. Oh. Okay, I'm almost done. Mine looks way worse than hers. And now we trim. Is there a rule of thumb to trimming here? No, anything goes. Anything goes. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Whoop. We're on to the gluing part. Okay. Little bits. We're trying to get like, oh, I see we're trying to spread it out. 
Oh, it's good enough. Mixing color on the fly. Oh my god. I, that's what I thought was happening. So he's literally just mixing from like red, green, and blue, and white. Yes. And black. <laughs> that's insane, champ. Just a little bit of this and a little bit of that gives yeah. you brown. Okay. That was it. Yeah. Oh my god, you guys move so fast. Okay, and then all your different tubs of flocking hair. Exactly. Yeah. It's like making tree tempura. <laughs> now, your, now your turn. Okay, my turn. All right, so just a little bit like this. Stick it in there. Wow. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> This one definitely looks a little better, but you're right, like all trees are different. Yeah, so. they don't need to look exactly the same. Yeah, they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be tree-like. That's really cool. Thank you very much, Xie Xie <laughs> How long have you been making trees? Seven years. A tree expert. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. So all you model railroaders out there now know the, the secret from the experts. Yep. Yeah, the, the factory professionals. It's anyway. no rocket science. No, no. It doesn't seem like anything in here is, but the combination of it all yes. is, is it's every little piece is necessary to sort of create the right illusion. Where should we head next? We've done 3D printing, we've done trees. Oh, we were gonna do electrical. Yes. And talk about LEDs. Yes. Because everybody yes. likes LEDs, yep. so. Okay, yep. let's go do that. So um, this nice lady here, she is putting on LEDs on the ceiling, on the floor plates. So these were like the floor plates that we saw being laser cut. Yes. That had all the little holes. Yes. So this is the floor plate that was cut. Yeah, so this is a ceiling. Oh, sorry, okay. So, so it, so it would go way. underneath yeah. the floor plate. So it plate. is a floor plate as well, and, and that's a ceiling. And then there'll be another flooring on top exactly. of this, right? So this is the bottom of the floor <laughs> yeah. plate. And yeah. as you can see, this big opening is where the core sits. Right, okay. Yeah. So this will be then be slotted yeah. down and, over and then that your, core. Your, your cable goes through the core, goes right. all the way down. Okay. And then each of these is just a little surface mount yep. LED, uh, <laughs> just like you would use in standard electronics. And they're all hand-wired together. Hand -wired. So how long does it take someone to solder up like something like this? Half an hour. 20 wow. minutes to half an hour. It would take me a lot longer than that. And this is still less work than just someone drawing the PCB yeah. out. And so you might make, you know, 50 of these mm -hmm. or 100 of these, depending on the building. Yeah. If it, they are all exactly the same, we would use PCB. Sure, sure. Oh, I see. And you're starting with just, just colorful ribbon cable mm -hmm. here as you're starting, just so you can keep everything straight. Yeah. If oh. the building is very tall, then you have a big bunch of wire going down. Right. You have a huge yeah. bundle that you yeah. then have to deal with and figure out what's what. I see. So you've got like, oh, she's got them all numbered here. Yep. So. Uh, floor numbers. Yep. Every, oh, okay. And then one bundle for, per floor. And yep. then you know what color per floor? Yes. Also because they split into different units because this is an apartment building. So that way you can control each unit individually. And so on, on, why is that important? For example, I want to buy a unit in this apartment. I want to know which one is sold or I prefer a particular corner. And so the I want to see salesperson that can yeah. light that up. Yeah. I uh, got it. That's crazy. Yeah. So kind of that recurring theme, hot glue, solder. Mm -hmm. Yep. Rails. Yep. Now moving on to this one, and you can see wow. the wiring inside. And oh, wow. OK, so is this, are we actually building onto the real core now? It, it, it is. So this is it the is. real core in yes. here. And now we're wiring <clears throat> on that core. Correct. It's interesting though, it seems like this is still very loose and like stuff's yes. moving around and we're so, not too so worried about no, heights and things. But once, once you put in the partitions and then it will control the, the height, the floor, floor to floor right. height. So wire it first yeah. and, then, and then put your partitions yeah. down. So really nice connectors. This gets connected to one of these boxes. Okay. And these boxes will have all your controllers and your computers. This, yeah. this, is, this is not, not hooked oh, up. Oh, I see, yet. not hooked up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have something that okay. is hooked up. Power right supplies downstairs. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Power supplies. Remember, we, we said that we have to pack our, our buildings different, separately. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we use that to do the connection when right. it's being assembled. Okay. So that will be the connector just for this building. Yeah. Right. I got it. This makes me nervous because it's like, okay, we know 
I know from walking around now mm -hmm. exactly how much work has already been put into this. Yes. And yet everything's sort of in this half finished state. Yes. You don't want to be the guy to like accidentally snap this one here. No, probably Because then not. all of this needs to be rewired again. You will again, be right? very unpopular. Mm -hmm. So we were asking originally, are these something you bought? Because neither Kenneth nor I recognize them. But no, this is actually something they're making in house. So it's, it's a piece of just acrylic oh, and then two rails with, with uh, surface mount LEDs soldered in between. So I want to take another walk around now that we've kind of so seen well, all the different yeah. departments and see how this all comes together out here <laughs> on the modeling floor again. And so this is the one we were looking at earlier. Yeah, and now he's fixing uh, a dead bulb. Okay, so we're doing some serious surgery here yes. to get a new bulb in. So it does happen. Oh my God. Let me see if I understand how this all comes together. First, we start with the core, yes, which cool. is just just uh, like glued together acrylic yep. into a hollow column. Yep. And then we've got all of the floor plates, yep. which are, are laser cut acrylic. Yes. And then we have the lighting, the, the ceiling panels yep. that go underneath. And are those, those are like ABS routed? Correct. Okay. Yep. And then, and then. No, they, they are also CNC, CNC pieces. But they uh, were laser sorry, cut I mean, holes. La laser cut. I'm sorry. Laser cut holes for yeah. the LED. Right. And uh, they are. And then like an ABS, the, ABS ring that goes ring, around the top. Like a, like a donut. That okay. Goes, goes to around. give that spacing yeah, for the wires exactly. and stuff. And then <clears throat> those are glued together. Yep. And assembled into all of the floors, which yep. are then. Uh, oh, sorry. The, the ceiling panels are wired up in the electrical department yes. to get all the LEDs yep. in them. And then they're all uh, glued together stacked up, wired onto the core. Correct. And now we're putting in mm -hmm. columns, which are CNC'd, it looks like. Yes. And we're starting to do the hand gluing and yep. assembly here. And then we'll get furniture in the if furniture are, from they, the modeler. If, if they are required. Right. Yes. And then you have your, your elevation, your facades. No, put the fa yeah. facades on the outside, which will be some yeah. combination of laser cut and, and uh, um, CNC, CNC mill. mill, and then you sometimes, you were saying you sometimes UV print on those. Correct. Uh, we've talked a bit about yeah. UV printers in another video. Yeah. Um, this is tying into everything we've yeah. seen before then, in other videos. And then do you hand paint as well? or uh, we, we do hand touch up, okay. but we do most of uh, spraying. In right, the okay. And then you go downstairs and do landscaping and trees landscaping, and, yeah. and grass. And Grass, water, trees, and water, and, and beaches, and uh, correct whatever else. Cars. Yeah, yeah. I think I pretty much understand how this comes together. I don't think I could do it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, if you, as you can see, you can see some oh, yeah. metal etching that we have not got into. So this is your design, and you'll send it out. This is kind of probably like the the process for the metal business cards I made. It, exactly. So a chemical exactly, essay. It is etching. exactly the, 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 okay. the, the exactly the same process. So this is um, a solid piece of acrylic. Yep. And it will get cladded by this uh, facade. Pieces. On all the sides. On all the sides. Oh. And they will be lit from the bottom. Right. So your windows will glow. And the walls will be metal. So the acrylic basically becomes a light pipe yeah. for the whole building. Right. You have some buildings that are really high detail, which yeah. are the ones that, that the model is actually for. Yeah. And then you have some buildings that are just background, right? Yeah. So these are the background, the context buildings. Right. And so those are the ones that will be just roughed in, just sort of get a sense of yes. what else is in yeah. the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, why don't we go take a look at some of your finished models? Sure. We've been kind of looking at stuff that's yes. in progress, but let's go look at what this looks like when you're fully done. So I recognize this one. Yes. <laughs> Tallest building in the world right now, right? Yep. Still, yep. is that still, still true? Yeah. Okay. Burj and, Khalifa. Yep. This is at one to one thousand scale. And then and this, this is this is I'm, a Burj Arab. Okay. Yeah. This is also, uh, also in also Dubai in, as in well. Du yes, also in Dubai. And this is a Swiss Re Tower, or better known as the Gherkin in London. This and, model goes all the way. Back. I can't even see in. the core. Yeah. All I can see is little tiny people and offices. We got to show off what's going on here, because this this blew me away when I first saw it. You've got moving boats. Yes, and this is also very analog, actually. Yeah, so you have magnets, and then you have a chain that goes on and around. <laughs> Just magnets moving underneath, yes. the, underneath the water? So Amazing. Every unit has a swimming pool. That's, <laughs> that's all you need to know. So pool here, apartment here that goes with that pool. Yep. 
And this one, you've got a working TV screen? We, yes, we do. We have a working TV. The Megatron. <laughs> the Megatron's showing Sagar? It no yes. longer looks like magic. For, I can start to think about, okay, I understand how this traffic light was made. Mm -hmm. I understand where that grass came from. It's a testament to what happens when you bring together a bunch of different skill sets and a whole bunch of work by a whole bunch of different people. Cham, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Scotty. For this is me. incredible to see what you guys are doing. And I think it's, it's really different from what we've seen in a lot of Strange Parts videos, but it's also combining together a whole bunch of different techniques and tools yeah. that people are familiar with. Yes. So it's, it's really cool to see the level to which you guys are taking this and, and what you're capable of. Thank you, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, it was fantastic. I'm glad, I'm glad you sent me an email probably, what, a year ago now? Yes. Saying, hey, Scotty, you should come check we've out our factory. We've been busy too. So, yeah, <laughs> I figured as much. So thank you. Thank you for thank taking you. all the time to show us around. Thank you. Uh, if people want to learn more about RJ Models, where yeah. should they go? They should visit our website, okay. www.rjmodels.com. Okay, and we'll put a link to that down in the description. You guys aren't sponsoring this. You were just kind enough to, uh, to show me around, and um, I really appreciate it. This has been really special. So thank you thank for you. your time. Thank you. I'm Scotty from Strange Parts. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. We've got more factory videos coming up soon. I'll see you again soon.